Hi, my name is Viktor Nagy, and I am the product manager of the Configure Group at GitLab. We are building the GitLab Kubernetes agent that forms the basis of GitLab's Kubernetes integrations in the near future. In this short video, I would like to provide you a brief motivation why we are building the agent and would like to invite you to try it out and provide us feedback so we can build a valuable product for your use cases and needs. Why are we building the agent? The previous Kubernetes integrations are great for people who are just getting started with Kubernetes, but they often lack customization possibilities and have requirements that might not be acceptable in many situations. Our goal with the agent is to provide an enterprise-ready approach to integrate Kubernetes workflows with GitLab that are secure, reliable, scalable, and customizable by experienced users, but at the same time are easy to get started for new users. Where are we currently? The first release of the agent is already available on self-managed GitLab instances, and we are working hard to enable it on GitLab.com too. I believe that by the, by the 13.7 release, the agent will be ready for quite a few enterprise use cases. And I will provide a quick overview of our roadmap at the end of this video, so you can know what to expect in the coming months. Let's see the agent in action. The agent is composed of two components, the Kubernetes agent server, that sits together with GitLab, and the component that sits in the cluster, we often call it Agent K. As already mentioned, GitLab Kubernetes Agent is not supported yet on GitLab.com, but it's already available on our staging environment. So I will use that for a demo. The Kubernetes Agent server is already installed there. Now I'm going to show, share with you my screen. And you can see here that the agent following industry best practices is configured in code. Actually, let's see how to set up. This diagram shows how the agent behaves. For a demo, it's important to understand that the agent is configured in code using the agent configuration repository seen here on the left, on the right, and the agent watches a manifest repository. And whenever <clears throat> we update our Kubernetes manifest in this manifest repository, as the agent finds new manifests, it applies them in our cluster. So we will need to configure the agent in a configuration project. Install the agent into our cluster and connect it with GitLab and provide a manifest repository that it can watch and it can apply in our cluster. I will start with the manifest repository. As for this demo, that's really simple. My manifest repository actually contains just this config map that you can see right now. Here in the config map, you can see a few things like this manifest YAML file, and this is what I'm going to apply in the cluster. There's almost nothing interesting in there. And that's it, this is where we start from. So let's see how to define a configuration repository. I will set up the agent configuration in the same repository together with the manifest repo. So in the documentation, I can see that to set up the configuration repository, I have to create a file dot gitlab slash agent, an agent name and the config YAML. And that file should contain a pointer a reference to the manifest repository that will be itself. So let's do that. Dot gitlab slash agents slash local k3s slash config dot YAML and the path of my manifest repository, which is here. Okay, let's get back to documentation. Now, the next step is to register the agent with GitLab. In return, I will receive a token that the agent will use to authenticate itself with GitLab. Here, I'm going to use a tool, an NPX script that is not available in our documentation. I'm going to open a terminal now and run that npx command that I have somewhere around here. Yep, here we go. This command asks a few questions like, first it asks my GitLab URL. It's the staging environment, so I just have to copy it in here. Then it asks for private access token. It kindly provides me a link, so I can just open that. I see it's on the staging side, so I'm going to add a agent demo perfect. It requires API scope. I'm creating the access token, copying it, and pasting it. 
the agent configuration project, I have it here at the top. It's the same that I added to the config file and the agent name, which is the local K3S. From this name, you can already figure out that this will be a K3S based installation. I'm going to install the agent later in this K3S cluster. So let's see what happens now as I hit enter. Okay, uh, I have received a token here in the CLI and I have received a small helper how to apply it if I don't want to customize it in other ways. And it provides me a pointer to our documentation that I have already opened. I'm going to close this now. So let's continue with creating the Kubernetes secret. It just tells me that I have to create the namespace. I'm going to use very simply create namespace GitLab agent. I'm using this namespace because this is the namespace used in the docs as well, but you can use any namespace you prefer. Namespace is created. And I'm going to copy the output of this npx script here. Oops, yes, here we go. And I guess it won't work this way, yeah. Okay. This is a previous example, so this won't work either. Just a minute. So we are just running kubectl create secret in the GitLab agent token namespace that we just created a goal and we pass the token that was generated for us. Oh, and the default here is to, in the documentation is the agent namespace. I have to change that to GitLab agent as I want to use that namespace instead. Perfect, now it's, it was created and I have everything set up so I can move on and install the agent into the cluster. Let's see what does the documentation tells about this. Clearly I will have to apply a resource manifest. So I'm going to take this example resource YAML that I will use here, I'm copying it and in this example, I have to change a few things. First, let's let's create a new YAML file here. So I have to change the image version and the address of the Kubernetes agent server. The staging of gitlab.com runs version 13.6 of GitLab. I need to use v13.6.x of the agent. I'm now going to use version 13.6.1 as I know that that's the most recent one. So I will have to change this latest to the 13.6.1. For our staging server, the Kubernetes agent server is at cas.staging.gitlab.com. I will have to set it here, cas.staging.gitlab.com. And now I'm ready to install the agent. So I am going to apply this YAML that is kubectl apply in the correct namespace this file that I have here. I can see that every resource was created successfully so, uh, so let's see what happens in the cluster. I have K9S opened here and you can see the namespaces already. I have a GitLab agent namespace and let's see the logs of this namespace. Oh, I just realized that I forgot to, to commit these changes. So clearly it probably won't work. Okay, then add it. Agent configuration. Let's push it to the repository. Okay, and now the agent started to synchronize and it's syncing 
everything was done. We can see even more information if I expand this window. But what's important is that if we move to the other, from the agent logs, we can set found a new version and in that manifest repo and it's applied in the cluster. So let's see the default namespace where I'm applying the config map, if we have it there. Yes, the config map is here and it has the same value that we have in code. So we have the config map deployed. Now let's change it and push the changes to the repository to see how things will behave in that case. So I'm changing this value to hello GitLab user. And I'm going to apply it. Uh, cool, I will push this code. And let's switch back to the agent. And see the logs as it actually it might have already even picked up everything here, but it might need a minute as well. Yeah, it did pick up because there was syncing once and syncing another time. So if I go back to <clears throat> the config map, we have everything synced up as you can see. Again, the agent has found these changes and apply them as we expect it to do. So the agent could build up a secure connection to GitLab and fetch the changes from there without the need of opening up my cluster to the internet. I think this is already great, but we know it's not enough for many use cases. So let's see what we plan to ship in the coming months. As you have seen, I have registered the agent and provide its configuration together with the manifest project. If I refresh this page, you can see that here I have the manifest YAML that was deployed and I have the agent defined there. Currently, this is the preferred way to setting up the agent. Today, this project has to be public, but from 13.7 on, you can use private projects as well for managing your agent and having your manifest below that same project. Moreover, I'm looking for customers who would be open to share the authorization setups around the Kubernetes workflows with us so we can provide a great experience for multiple manifest projects that are used by the same agent. Today, the agent requires you to use pure Kubernetes manifests in the manifest project, as I have shown you here with this config map. We believe that this is the best workflow to move forward, but we understand that many of you might use GitLab's outstanding CI CD engine to deploy to your clusters in a push based way. We would like to make it easy to start using the agent for you as well. So our top item in our backlog is to provide a tunnel for you in the CI environment. In my example, I have used a single manifest YAML file to describe what the agent should deploy. If I switch branches here, from 13.7, a single repository might contain a hierarchy of manifests organized into directories and subdirectories, as you can see it here. We still have the configuration up there, but here we have environments production directory that contains my manifest. My manifest. And from now on, from 3.7 on, it doesn't have to be a manifest YAML, but it can be any named YAML file there. We have many other items as well on our roadmap, but I believe that these are the most important ones. This concludes this demo video. If you found this approach interesting, we are in investing heavily in Kubernetes and would like to see better integration with GitLab. I would like to hear your feedback and speak with you about your use cases and needs. Thank you for your attention.